Shalom Sham. Uh, this video I'm going to try to just compare the two views physically, visually, so you can understand what, I, what I'm claiming, uh, how, how it would even work. Like, so this video is not really about proving what I'm claiming, but just to help you understand what it is I, I'm even saying. So, I'm going to, I, I was trying to look for, like, a ball or something to use to, to represent the Earth. Uh, I couldn't really find any balls. I didn't look too long, but I found circular objects, and that should suffice for the demonstration. So, this I'm going to use as the, uh, as representative of the Earth. Um, let's see here. Okay. Uh, let me see if I make it darker. I close the curtains, see if you can see it. Um, mm -hmm. I thought it would be more clearer. Um, okay, just, just remember if you can try to see, or I'll try, I'll try to hold it close to the screen so you can see it. Um, so this whole rubber band is going to represent the equator. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, tilt it. So it's tilted 23.5 degrees. I don't know if it's exactly 23.5 degrees that I'm doing right now, but um, let's say that it is, okay? So, so it's tilted, sorry, uh, okay. Here is the sun, okay? So the sun's going to be right here. So, uh, it, you know, it's rotating, as you know. That's how it, it accounts for the, um, sorry, okay. That's how it, it accounts for the, uh, day and night by rotating in the standard system. So right now we see that if we go straight on with the sun, it's actually that the uh, northern hemisphere is more, receives more of the sun than the southern hemisphere. So the southern hemisphere has a much smaller direct uh, impact to it, direct link. So, so turning around every day, okay, that, that, that's what it would be if it was rotating. But with the sun, if the sun was the one that was moving, it would be going around it every day, first of all, and take take a look right now. See, there's a there's a angle of relationship. So basically, basically what we would have is uh, this would be up like this up here, and the Earth would be like this. So you see the same the same relationship, the same angle of reference is had. But now the Earth is upright. It's not tilted. So, the Sun, what it would be doing, if it's going around the Earth, it would be going like this. It's rotating like this. So it's maintaining the relationship. Okay? Now, so that, that I just showed you was summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Because when the major when the northern hemisphere is uh, more directed at the sun, that's when it's summer. When it's less directed at the sun, that's when it's winter or fall, um, approaching winter. So now I'm going to show you the comparison of spring and fall, the exact moment spring and fall begins. 
So, so uh, we have uh, let's see here. So we have the relationship there. But now, um, now what we have is that the Earth is directly in front of it. So both the northern and the southern hemisphere get an equal amount of light because they're both they're both getting the same amount of light because they're in front of it. But you see the the tilt is still there in our in our regular scenario. But so it's rotating, right? Rotating. That's how it counts for for day and night. But in the um, in the sun going around the Earth scenario, the Earth is the Earth is not tilted, and so it goes around once a day, and the same relationship is preserved. Okay. So, so that that was the. Um, that was spring and fall. Now, it's going to be on the other side. Okay. So now, the northern hemisphere is away from the sun. So when it rotates, that's how it accounts for day and night. But now, let's see what it's with the with if it, the sun is going around, if it's the sun going around, the same relationship is maintained. But instead of the the Earth being tilted, it's oh set a right. But the sun is at lower down here, twenty about you know twenty three point five degrees, and so every day, the sun's going like this. It's rotating like this. I mean, not rotating, revolving. So that's the, the four seasons. I you only saw three because fall and spring are the same, same relationship in both models. So now I'm going to just show you uh, how it the year, the year for the the Earth in the standard model, and then the year for the Earth in the model that I understand it to be. So, for some reason, the Earth is randomly tilted 23.5 degrees. I don't know why, but it just is. The scientists, I don't know what their explanation is, it's just magic that it's 23.5 degrees. Um, so, Rotating every day, so it's summer. It's summer right now. Rotating every day. <laughs> rotating, rotating. Okay, now, right here, it's fall. Rotating, rotating, it's revolving around. And now look what we have. Winter. Rotating, 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 rotating. Now all the way back to sorry, all the way back to spring. And then it goes through the cycle, rotating, 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 and then it becomes summer. Okay. So that that's the view. Twenty three point five degree tilt. Rotating, rotating, revolving, rotating, 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 revolving. Now, here is the view of the sun going around the Earth. The sun remains the same. I mean, the Earth remains the same. Excuse me. Here's what the sun does. Summertime, right here. 
as the year goes on, it keeps going like this. Keeps going at every new day. It goes a little bit lower. And then finally, as it keeps going, it's now fall. So it's going like this, fall. Alright, and now it's going to winter, keeps going to winter. And finally, it's the exact winter point now. So rotating, uh, not rotating, revolving, revolving once a day, but the Earth is completely not, it's not tilted. And then it goes back, and finally it's spring again, Re uh, revolving. So that's how the two views compare. The Earth, in my view, is not moving at all. The stars and the sun are all going around and around and around at an angle during the summer, like this. And then it keeps lowering, and, uh, and then, you know, fall, spring, during the fall and spring, that's when the stars and the sun are over here, right? And then uh, winter, they're down here. So, the for me, I find that the this isn't proof, but I find that the sun going around the Earth model is much simpler. To, to conceive of, rather than having to deal with a tilted Earth. They, do you know that the only reason they know it's a tilted Earth, that they think it's a tilted Earth, is because they assume that it's proven that the Earth goes around the sun. So the only way to account for the changes in the seasons is to say, oh, there must be a tilt. That's how they, that's where the origin of the idea that the Earth is tilted came from. Because that's the only way to, to reconcile their view that the Earth goes around the sun once a year. It has to be tilted, otherwise you can't account for the seasons. But in the, in the sun going around the Earth model, you don't have to make up this tilt out of thin air. And the nothing is tilted. There no tilts are there. But there are angles. That's the that's the key. The the sun has the same angle to the earth. And that's how it accounts for the seasons. But nothing is tilted. That's the beauty of it. Why would God make things tilted unnecessarily? It just, to me, it seems highly unlikely. If that's what he did, then he did. And I just don't understand why he would. Uh, so, I, I, again, I say this is not a proof. It's not proof. But if you believe in a God who does things... He does the simplest things uh, that need to be done unless something more complex is required then you the the model I gave you is much simpler uh, you see the, the more complex an explanation is the more unlikely it's true it doesn't make it true just because it's complex but the more things, well, may, it has to be this because, you know, all these different things, all these different requirements you have to come up with in order to justify your view, to reconcile it with the evidence. Um, it just, it's much easier just to accept a plain, simple idea that nothing is tilted and everything works beautifully. So that that's just the physical representation of my view. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a good day. Shalom. Shalom, Sarfart. Uh, this is Ania, and 
In this video, I am going to try to explain to you the international date line. Uh, this is the globe. Uh, this is the best I can do uh, with what I have. So, here is Israel, obviously between Africa and Asia, right here, and India, and now between between the United States and Russia. Hard to see on this one. Uh, Russia is up here. Between there, that's where the international date line is. And so it goes all the way down here. Except what I showed you is it zigzags. But so, roughly, the international date line is here. Okay? That's where they do it. That's where they choose it. Um... And this is also seems to be signified on my globe right here. There's a huge white blank right here, which I think signifies that it is the international date line. So I'm going to illustrate physically how this works. Okay. So here's how this works um, for the the the. Uh, the traditional international date line. Here's how time works for us. The Earth is divided by the pagans into 24 time zones. So the first time zone starts with the international date line and goes west. Okay. Uh, so here, let's say, is sunset. Okay. So this is sunset uh, Sabbath, Sunday, sunset Sabbath, according to the international date line. Okay, but the next time zone over, it's one hour before sunset. That's because the sun hasn't reached there yet in the sky. It hasn't set for them yet, but it has set for the people at the international date line. So, we're going to set, uh, I'm not sure what day it is today, but m let's just pick uh, May 15th. I'm not sure if that's it or not. So, today, May 15th, uh, Sabbath. Okay, let's say that's what it is. The Sabbath just began on the International Date Line in the traditional system. So, one hour to the west is the next time zone, but it's one hour before sunset, so it's still May 15th, one hour before sunset. Then, two hours before sunset is two time zones before, still on May 15th. Then, three time, time zones behind three hours, and four, five, Six, seven, eight, because it's eight, and I'm I'm just kind of randomly, I'm not sure where the time zones are. Okay, so I'm just randomly going here. So then, eventually, we keep going twelve hours behind, and roughly, so twelve hours, it's a little bit after sunrise. Okay, so keep going, and then eventually, it's sunrise. Uh, and it's still May 15th. You keep going to the west, keep going to different time zones, it's still earlier in the day. It's still earlier in the, in the day. But now, now, if you keep going back time zones, now it is May 14th. Do you see that? It's May 14th, because you kept going back an hour. Because each time you go one time zone to the west, 
it's an hour behind the international dateline. So eventually, if you keep going back an hour, it's going to be May 14th instead of May 15th. But then, the very last time zone, the 24th time zone, the first time zone to the east of the international dateline is 7 p.m. May 14th. Because remember, you kept going back an hour. But if you go the one time zone over to the international dateline time zone, then you will go back to May 15th, 6 p.m. Because when you were here at what, 6 p.m. May, May 15th, at the international dateline, at that exact moment is 5 p.m. here, 4 p.m. here, 3 p.m. here, 2 p.m. here, etc., etc. And at that exact same moment, it is 7 p.m. here, May 14th, because it kept going back an hour. That's with the international dateline here, though. But, so note, here's where they say the international dateline is. But if the international dateline is Israel, then that means here is where May 15th, 6 p.m. is. And then everything to the west is each time zone to the west is an hour behind the Israel International Date Line. So that means the first time zone to the east of the International Date Line of Israel is 24 hours behind. So International Date Line of Israel, it would be 6 p.m. But the first time zone to the, to the east of Israel would be... 7 p.m. the previous day. It would be the previous day. So May 15th. May 15th in Israel here. The international date line. But here is May 14th. Uh, because it is the last time zone. Rather than one of the firsts. So... If you see, here is where the international dateline is supposed to be. Here is where they say it is. Where they say it is. That means everything between here, everything between here, all the way to the international dateline. Instead of being ahead of Israel, instead of being uh, instead of being later in the day of of uh, May fifteenth, instead of it being six p.m. at the international date line and like twelve p.m. at Israel, instead the international Dateline is like 18 hours or something behind. So you see, everything between Israel here and the international dateline is one whole day ahead because they are wrongly starting it over here when it should be starting here in Israel and only later coming to here. But they're starting it here first. They're starting it over here first. Um, so that was the best I could do. My apologies if I still, if it's still unclear to you. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, continue to ask me in private messaging. Uh, thank you and shalom. Hello everyone, this is Onia. I am making this video 
in order to refute the popular teaching that is being spread on Facebook that I've been seeing, and that is the idea that the Earth is flat. I believe this is not correct. I think this is making the movement of returning to the ancient ways look silly and that they can't use basic reasoning abilities. When we're seeing so many people jump on board this, it's very shocking to me how people are so quickly to accept this idea when there's so many flaws with it. And this video is going to be about pointing out those flaws. And I'm going to show certain things which are factual and being observed uh, to prove that this flat earth model pictured here in the diagram that I drew is simply impossible and therefore cannot be true. So I drew this. This is not to scale because I did not use a, I tried to draw a circle but it's not a perfect circle uh, but this should, should suffice for the purposes of of teaching. It's It's close enough to represent the model, the flat earth model that they are using. Okay, so I'm going to have the light turned off and I'm going to use this flashlight as the sun, okay? And this will help show the flaws of their system. So first, in the middle is the North Pole, according to the flat earth system. Then here is the equator, and the equator is a circle goes around like this okay and here is Antarctica oops sorry about that the earth just fell the flat earth fell okay uh, Antarctica is the outer edge and it surrounds the entire earth according to the flat earth model the entire circle of the Earth is Antarctica, or in other words, the North Pole, excuse me, the South Pole. Uh, on, a, on a globe system, there's only one point for the South Pole, but in this system, the South Pole is the edge, and it's on every single point around the entire Earth. Also, according to their system, if you go to the South Pole, you wouldn't be able to go any farther or, or else you would fall off. Okay, so that's their system. And also, also part of their system uh, is when you go east and west, instead of going in a straight line when you're going to the east or to the west, it's actually going in a curve of a circle. So if you were to go completely east the entire way until you wind up in the same place you started, you'd go in a circle, a complete circle, a perfect circle, all the way back to where you started. Okay, so uh, that's their, their system. The northern hemisphere is inside this circle, okay? It's inside this circle. Everything inside the circle is the northern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere is everything outside the circle. So looking at this system now, we are going to see some major problems. First of all, the the uh, the fact is we know for a fact that not all places on Earth are experiencing day at daytime at the same time. Some places on Earth are having daytime and other places are having night. The only way that is possible is if this sun beam is not covering the entire Earth at the same time. So, in other words, see this? This is the sun covering everything, which would mean that the entire Earth is in sunlight and is having a daytime. That never happens in any model. So that means for a flat Earth system, the light would have to be smaller. It would have to be more focused and it would not be shining on certain places. Okay. So, uh,
it would be more like something like this, not shining everywhere, okay? So it has to be somewhere like that to be able to account for the fact that there is not daytime on every place. So it would go around like this, around like this, okay? That would be how the, the system works. Now there is a problem. It is a fact that at the North Pole, this is a fact everybody, we know this for a fact, in the Arctic Circle, this is, there's a, the Arctic Circle is a circle that's around the North Pole, very close to it, and in that place, it is, there are times of the year where it is daytime, the sun can be seen in the sky, 24 hours of the day. So, and it is also a fact, we have observed this, that at the North Pole, it is 24 hours a day for six months straight of sunlight. Right here, like this. So, uh, the only way that is possible is if the sunlight is always on that constantly. The sun always has to be at the North Pole. So we start going out outwards from the North from the North Pole, and here we have a problem. Because if the Earth is moving around, it's not going to be constantly on the North Pole. Now, if it is constantly on the North Pole, it's also going to be con constantly on the other parts surrounding it. You see the problem. So, if the sun is circling around like this, it's not pointing at the North Pole. And yet, we know for a fact that it has to be pointing at the North Pole for six months straight in order for what is being observed by people who are at the North Pole. In order for what is happening there, that has to be the case. That the sun is constantly being focused on the North Pole for six months straight. So already that is a problem. Hold on a second. Okay. Then... It is a fact that in Antarctica, in the Antarctic Circle, we have people who have been there, okay? So we know this is a fact, everybody. In the Antarctic Circle, there are times of the year where it is always, always sunlight, always daytime for 24 hours of the day. That is only possible if the sun is always on that spot for the all 24 hours of the day. Just as it happens in the North Pole. We have proof because we people have been there and we know there are people living there in, uh, or at least, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if they live in Antarctica. Uh, I can't remember now. But people have been there and no one... I don't think any flat earth people would say that people have not been in the Antarctic Circle. Maybe there are people who say that. I don't know. But so we have sufficient evidence because we've been there before. Okay. People have been there before in the Antarctic Circle. They have found out that the daytime is 24 hours constantly of sunlight where the sun is above the horizon all 24 hours of the day. At Antarctica, the only way that is possible, again, since Antarctica uh, is all the way around, the only way that would be possible is if the sun wasn't moving and it was staying at this one spot the whole time for the 24 hours of the day. Or if the sun was so large that it was covering everything. So that's how it could be in Antarctica. 
But we know that's not the case. We know that the sun is not covering the entire earth. So that sun time, so that daytime is everywhere. And we know that the sun is not just standing still on one place over Antarctica. And yet we are observing in Antarctica, everywhere in Antarctica, uh, or not everywhere, but everywhere in the Antarctic circle, there are times of the year in the same season where it is 24 hours uh, of sun being above the horizon. And this is completely irreconcilable with this flat earth model. It does not make sense. A second problem with it is that the ratios, we know for a fact that the seasonal ratios as you approach the North Pole are the same seasonal ratios as you approach the South Pole except it's reversed. So the fact is when it is uh, when it is um, the when it is winter where uh, in the northern hemisphere at the same time of the year it is the exact opposite season of the year but it's at the same day of the year the same season on the other end of the year so when we're keeping when we're keeping like for instance Passover uh, in the northern hemisphere they are keeping tabernacles in the southern hemisphere because it's the exact opposite time of the year uh, when our spring begins in the northern hemisphere at that same exact time uh, fall begins in the southern hemisphere and that goes all the way around and what we've observed through through observing uh, each part of where people live on the earth in both hemispheres what we see is that the ratios are the same for the northern hemisphere as to the south it's just in the opposite uh, it's it's the opposite direction so for instance uh, if you are say 45 degrees north of the equator well, however far that up that is okay 45 degrees up from the equator north of the equator at any place around here um, 45 d degrees north let's say uh, is the spring the spring is starting and uh 45 degrees south of the equator fall is starting and then uh it's the same ratio except it's going in the opposite direction so as spring goes to summer the days are getting longer 45 degrees below the 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 days are getting shorter because it's entering into winter it's getting approaching winter but it's approaching winter at the same exact rate that it is in the northern hemisphere so 45 degrees north of the equator it's approaching summer at the same exact rate that it is approaching winter in the southern hemisphere but how can that be with this model because the it's not equal it's not equal when you when you see the relationship here the northern hemisphere is very small in comparison to the southern hemisphere all the way around so uh it doesn't make sense it's it's contrary to what we're seeing in the in the globe model the fact is the equator is the, the longest part of the earth and then everything going north and everything going south is directly proportional just as we're observing the seasons are the same except just in the opposite direction so 50 degrees north of the equator 50 degrees south of the equator 
we're observing the same thing happening. Just one, the, the north is going, approaching summer, and the southern hemisphere at 50 degrees is approaching winter, but it's happening at the exact same rate, the same speed, the same relationship every day of the year. It's this, all the same. And the same thing at 60 degrees, and 70 degrees, and 80 degrees, north and south, 80 degrees north, 80, 80 degrees south. It's, it's progressing through each day of the year at the same exact rate if you are that uh, latitude and longitude below and that latitude and longitude above the equator, north and south of the equator. So. Uh, this to me is sufficient proof that this model does not work. The flat earth model is a hoax. It doesn't, it's not valid. So now the way I presented this was a little bit uh, poorly done in the sense it's a, I drew this and it's, you know, it's not a perfect circle and uh but it's close enough so that it suffices and secondly it's i didn't script this so you could see i was pausing trying to figure out how to best say it but uh, this was just on my heart and i just was speaking this uh from my understanding using basic common sense reasoning if people cannot see that this this doesn't work and i don't know how to help you Okay, so let me repeat the information slightly. Again, there are times of the year where it is always daytime, always sunset for 24 hours in the Arctic Circle. But it has to move around because the sun moves around every day. So the, the fact is there are no other place. When, when it is 24 hours of sunset at the Arctic Circle, it is not 24 hours of, excuse me, 24 hours of sun being above the horizon, when it is that at the Arctic Circle, it is not doing that anywhere else on Earth. That is a fact that all people agree on, all scientists agree on, and it has been observed that when the sun is 24 hours up above the horizon the entire day in the Arctic Circle. It is not doing that anywhere else on Earth. So the only way for that to work is if the sun is, remember the sun has to move around. Uh, but it can't move around if it's at the Arctic Circle because it has to always be pointed at the Arctic Circle in order for it to be constantly daytime for 24 hours. So there has to either be multiple suns, which is ridiculous, or it has to be farther away. And then if it's farther away, then it's going to be, uh, it's going to be sunset. Uh, I keep saying sunset. It's going to be sun time all 24 hours of the day in other parts outside of the Arctic Circle. And yet this is not what we are seeing. And we are also seeing at the same time that it is that it is sun time for 24 hours in the Arctic Circle, we find out that it is also uh, 24 hours of night with no sun above the horizon uh, at the the Antarctic Circle. So the same remember again the same relationships happening at the Antarctic Circle and at the Arctic Circle, except it's reversed. The Arctic Circle is constantly uh, sunset for 24 hours, and then the, the, uh, the Antarctic Circle is constantly night for 24 hours. So this does not work. The system doesn't work. And... Um, And again, and, uh, oh, in, in the equator, we know for a fact that at the equator, it is equal day and equal night 
every day of the year. Every day of the year. So the only way for that to work is if the relationship and ratio to the equator is the same every day of the year. Because if it's going off from the, if it's, if it's not the same direct relationship, if the sun is now going like this, then it's not going to be uh, the same amount of light being there. And so the, uh, it, it won't turn out to be, uh, like there's no way for it to be equal day and equal night only at the equator and not anywhere else if the sun is moving away from the equator at different parts of the year. The sun has to be at the same line of the equator, the same angle always, or else it just doesn't work. I don't know how else to say it. It's very simple uh, mathematics. So I know I said I have said this uh, poorly, but I don't want to record it a second time. So I hope this was sufficient and that this helped you understand the horrible flaws of the flat earth model. And there are so many other flaws too, but this is just one of the biggest ones. So anyways, thank you for watching this video. And I know, uh, again, this was poorly done, but uh, it was done on the spur of the moment. And despite the flaws of my presentation, this should be sufficient proof against Flat Earth. Thank you all for watching and Shalom.